Hey everyone, it's Brian. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about vulnerability management and why it's essential for your business. You might be a decision maker, you might be an IT person, you might be a CIO or an IT director. So this video is for you. A vulnerability exists in software and hardware in applications or in software that runs hardware like firmware and things like that. And these are weaknesses that can be exploited by cyber criminals in order to do really bad things like deploy malware or steal information unknowingly. There's all kinds of tricks that cyber criminals are doing today and there's plenty of videos on this channel where you can learn about all that. But what we're trying to do with vulnerability management in your company is we're trying to develop a systematic approach to identifying, prioritizing, and addressing these vulnerabilities. That's ultimately what we're doing when we're talking about vulnerability management. And there's two things to keep in mind here as we go through this, right? There's the role of IT, and then there's the role of the business. As I take you through this video, I'm going to try to highlight the things that you need to consider from both sides of the equation. Because yes, IT, their job is to make things work, make things secure and get it done. But sometimes those decisions can really impact the business. You need to look at this from both sides of the equation if you want to achieve this successfully in your business we're seeing the increase in the requirement of vulnerability management across the board. It's being introduced in regulations, especially in heavy regulated industries like finance and healthcare. We're seeing it show up in government contracts. We're seeing it being included with language in cyber insurance policies or in the applications that you're filling out, asking you what you're doing around vulnerability management and what your maturity level is around this is kind of what they're gauging. There's all kinds of clauses in PCI, if you accept credit cards, that require you to do this as part of your cybersecurity program. A lot of contracts too, guys, that we're seeing between companies are requiring you to do vulnerability management or they're asking you in a third-party risk assessment questionnaire what your practices are around dealing with vulnerabilities that may creep up in your company. A lot of people have the belief, and this isn't an incorrect belief by any stretch of the imagination, but what you also have to understand before I say what I'm about to say is that cybersecurity is constantly evolving and changing. And that's why it's important that you stay up to date and that you are getting relevant threat intelligence on a regular basis because this stuff changes so drastically and so frequently. And why I say that is because a lot of people probably still believe watching this video that email and phishing and in your employees are the number one way that cyber criminals are getting into businesses and doing things like deploying ransomware. While that still holds true today, if you start to look at the numbers, you are starting to see quite a shift in how much and how successful they're being using that method versus going after companies knowing that they're not doing vulnerability management and they're just using exploits and getting in by basically busting down the front door that's not very well secured in the first place because these vulnerabilities exist. And the amount of attacks that we're seeing here in 2023 that resulted from vulnerabilities not being taken care of by companies in a timely manner or at all, has increased, has skyrocketed almost 20, 30%. It's almost rivaling phishing attacks and other social engineering that typically is 60 to 80% of the reason why most attacks happen. That number's coming down and this vulnerability stuff is increasing. You're going to get ransomware if you don't do this stuff. Hackers are building automated tools to look for vulnerabilities on an automated basis to kind of just say, hey, I'm going to create a robot that's just going to sit here and do what I do all day and look for vulnerabilities out on the internet by pinging different IP addresses and calling different phone numbers. If you don't understand what pinging other IP addresses means, they're just basically calling up different phone numbers and waiting to see if they can get a victim on the line and they alert the cyber criminal that, hey, I might have something here and then they actually get a human being involved. So this process of finding your vulnerabilities out there exposed or even internally in your network if they have access to it is just becoming easy for them. So they're moving in that direction versus trying to trick your employees into clicking on emails, which is getting increasingly harder for them as people become more educated about this stuff. Let's talk about some business challenges around implementing vulnerability management. 
because not only do we have to deal with the fact that if we don't do it, we could end up with ransomware. We probably will end up with ransomware with the way things are going, but challenges around implementing, right? Because like I said before, we have to look at both sides of the equation. There's the business side and then there's the IT side. When your IT department carries this out, one of the things they're going to do is they're going to run what's known as a risk assessment or some kind of vulnerability scan to see if anything exists within your network, within your environment, within your cloud services, whatever you have in your business, it all should be looked at and penetration tests or at least vulnerability scan to see if anything bad can happen if a cyber criminal were to figure out that they have access to something. The idea here is, is you know, IT is going to find these things. They're going to say, hey, whether you use an outside company or your own internal team to run a tool that tells you this, it's all going to come back with a report that has a list of vulnerabilities that were discovered on your network. And then the business has to start to figure out how do we deal with these challenges? How do we deal with these vulnerabilities and get rid of them? Well, the easy answer is, is you update your software. That's also presents a lot of challenges for businesses when you say things like this, because IT, all they care about is getting the vulnerability gone and updating the software. However, if you have challenges like we saw recently with a manufacturing company where they had a nine-year-old machine that ran their conveyor belt that produced their products, there were probably over 15 vulnerabilities on this machine when it was analyzed and the IT wanted to replace the system, get it upgraded. Well, that would cost the company well over $300,000 to do and they weren't prepared for that expense. When you're faced with a situation like this, we have to start looking at other ways because taking that machine offline is not an option. This company would not be able to stay in business. They would lose revenue. They would run out of product to create and sell to their customers. So other solutions have to be looked at in this scenario. There's a myriad of ways that you could approach and handle this situation. And I would suggest if you find yourself in a similar situation that you reach out to professionals that can work with you and help you. But in this case, what we ultimately decided and what we recommended to the company was that they start to look at segregating the network and keeping certain systems away from this one system that we know, unfortunately, cannot be upgraded, cannot be patched, but it needs to exist in the environment in some way, shape or form. That's when we start to recommend getting away from what we call flat networks to moving to more segregated networks and switching things around so hackers can't easily find them, get to them, take them down. Because we know when hackers hack manufacturing facilities, they love to go after the operational systems to shut down that assembly line so they can't make money and it puts more pressure on them to pay. Hope that gives you a good background guys of what vulnerability management is, how you start looking at this from both sides of the equation. You know, it's, it is an IT problem, but it also presents business challenges. Not all vulnerabilities are like that. Some of them can be just easily patched and taken care of very quickly, which I would recommend for those scenarios. You do them very quickly and you have a regular process around this that you're looking at things on a quarterly basis at a minimum. Don't just do this once or twice a year. Do this all the time. There's even services out there that we offer where we're constantly looking for vulnerabilities on a constant 24 by seven basis and remediating them, especially for high compliance clients that we work with. As we go through this, where do we go? How do we start, right? How do we start dealing with vulnerability management? The first step is get an assessment, as I always say. You can either have a full blown risk assessment done or you can just have somebody scan your network vulnerabilities, but that's where you're going to start on this journey. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to prioritize what fine. Some things, like I said, can be taken care of quickly without minimal effort. A lot of times it's just might be a setting change to auto update a piece of software that you're running and you really don't have to worry about it other than checking to make sure that the auto update is actually working from time to time. And some things present more of a challenge, like the example I laid out earlier, where you need to consider more things around the situation than just updating the software. And then you work on what I already suggested is remediation, right? Remediate the vulnerability. That might mean patching. That might mean creating a segregated network or limiting access to certain machines to only certain individuals or certain platforms. Like maybe you cut access off to the internet if a machine really doesn't need internet access to operate machinery. Like in this case, with the example I gave earlier with the manufacturing. And then what you need to do is verify. So essentially, once your team says, we updated this, we patched this, we removed this, then you're gonna wanna run risk assessment to verify 
identify that the vulnerabilities that you believe you taken care of are actually gone. Don't skip that step because it's critically important. And then eventually what you want to get to, in my opinion, is a place where your business is mature enough, where you can monitor this whole situation continuously. And if you can do that today, great, I would say start. But these periodic ones are definitely more cost effective than a continuous vulnerability monitoring program. But a lot of industries require this already, especially heavy regulated ones, as I mentioned earlier. But at the end of the day, this is where we want to get to. We want to get to doing it on a periodic basis to eventually maturing into something that we're regularly doing and our team handles or you outsource that responsibility to a third party company like ours. And if, like I always say in our videos, if you need any help with this, please reach out to a professional or us. I'm sure there's a lot of great companies that we're willing to help you. We would also love to earn your business. Reach out if you need help around this. We'll leave a few resources down below that are related to vulnerability management and how it can help you and your company and ways that you can do this easier. So please check those out. If you have any questions or comments, drop down below. And please remember, if you made it this far in the video, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.